Okay, did not, uh, oops, what the heck did I hooked here? Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm down here at Gone Fishing in Victoria. Um, it's my local kind of tackle store these days, so pretty exciting morning. Actually got the Daiwa sign behind me. It's a little bit glary, so excuse the squinting, but I'm here to pick up my 2022 Daiwa Exist. So I'm grabbing the 2500 size, uh, the regular. I did originally want the shallow spool, but those are being delayed, so um, we're gonna go inside, check them out. I haven't seen one in person yet, so really quite excited. And uh, got some new braid from X Braids Australia as well that we're gonna spool up on the new Exist. So yeah, really looking forward to it. And then we'll take it out for a spin and see how it compares to all the other Exists. Just wanted to give a massive shout out to Danny, Sam, Max, and the whole crew at Gone Fishing. They're located at 29 Latham's Road, Carrum Downs. So big shout out to Danny, especially for ordering in the 2500 size exist for me. I initially ordered the 2500S as the shallow spool is probably more suited to a lot of the fishing that I do, but due to a delay in getting the S models uh, into stores, and having a look at the specs with Danny, we really decided that the 2500 is probably going to suit me just fine. So big shout out to you and uh, thank you very much for also allowing me to grab a second one while I was there. I know stocks are pretty limited and uh, we'll chat about why I grabbed two um, in a little bit. But really today just wanted to talk about while we've got, you know, everything kind of laid out, we've got a, a sea of exists in front of me. I'm going to do a quick unboxing, show you guys what's inside the packaging. I've got one of the 2500s already on a rod ready to go, but really just wanted to talk about from a physical and a visual perspective, uh, my first observations. And uh, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of uh, all the details of materials, construction, things like that. I'm a pretty basic kind of fisherman. I look for weight. Uh, gear ratios and drag pressures and capacities. So those are really the key things for me, but as we all know, with an exist and the newest technology, these really are the latest and greatest from a, a construction and a material perspective. Um, okay, so let's dive into quick unboxing. So double boxed, we've got the, the brown kind of box on top and inside Nice, clean Daiwa packaging, consistent with previous releases. Inside, we've got a soft neoprene pouch and a little slot there for your handle, which comes off like so. That pops inside the case. And then we've got, I guess, the rest of the, the body and spool. Um, putting it back together. Look, first observations for me, and uh, I guess coming back to the to the box as well. Got instructions, a uh, few washers, things like that. 
pretty standard sort of stuff. Um, as well as that, I guess the Australian guys have been running a promo on the exists for the initial launch. So there are a couple of uh, flat brim hats. So I might hold on to these if I ever do decide to sell these in the future or uh, give them away as part of my regular giveaways as well. So uh, stay tuned for that. If that does eventuate, we'll put these away. Now my first impressions of the exist for a 2500 size, it's a very compact body and spool. In terms of weight, it's probably quite similar, or quite close to a previous generation 2015, 2003 size. And in terms of size, I'm gonna do a bit of a video a little bit later for you guys, but in terms of size, it probably sits somewhere between a 2000 or 2003 and your traditional 2500 body. Um, so this is the, the 20, 2022, two and a half thousand size exist but for me it would if we were to give it a number it would be somewhere in that 2200 and 2250 kind of range um, to give you a sense of uh, of size and perspective from a, a weight perspective i think it comes in at around 165 grams and having tried it on a couple of different rods inside um, it really balances well with rods that have previously only balanced up with a 2000 size as well as on rods that you know traditionally do take a 2500 size reel so i think the the size and the weight of the new exist is really going to be a fantastic all-rounder on a number of rods and for a number of applications now in terms of the review i'm going to be comparing the new 2500 exist versus the 2015 2508 uh, i'm going to be comparing it against the 2012 uh, but however, in this test, I'm going to be using an RCS spool uh, with straight through fluorocarbon, not braid like on the other three. And the reason for that is uh, I've recently discovered that the OG or the original spool on this 2510 uh, had a bit of a wobble as you took drag off the line. And uh, what we discovered upon, uh, I guess, stripping back the braid is that we've got a crack in that spool. So this is likely uh, due to the time when we were spooling this up on a machine over the years at some stage. The backing was probably wound on too tight and thus started to bite in and caused a little crack in the spool. So that's unfortunate, but I did purchase the, this reel second hand. So I don't know its history and uh, it is a 10 year reel after all. So what I do have is an RCS spool spooled up with three pounds straight through, which will give us a really good indication anyway. And the guys at Dyer Australia have reached out and said that they potentially have a spare spool. So I may get another spool perhaps in time for this review. But if not, we're gonna be running the RCS um, on a 2500 size 2012 model. And we've got the OG, which you guys all know very well. So this is the, the reel that started the whole uh, exist journey for me and for many others as well. And uh, I guess the other reason, coming back to an earlier point, why I ended up picking up two, um, I have slowly over the years been moving on some of the older models. So one of these reels is likely gonna go uh, out of my collection in the next couple of weeks and be replaced with the second 2022 exist. And I'm still just working out in terms of my pairings for rods and reels on which reel is gonna go onto which rod. And then uh, in the coming weeks, I'm gonna do an updated rods and reels 2022 kind of arsenal uh, overview and walkthrough and give you guys an update on uh, what the, the rod collection looks like, uh, what I've got paired up with which reel, uh, as it is significantly different from uh, from the one that I did about two years ago now. So yeah, that's it for the bench kind of review, the the chat at home, having a look at it visually. One, one other point that I will make before we wrap up and get out onto the water is the, the, the one thing that you guys will probably notice on the, on the table in front of me is there is no 2018 exist model here. Now I briefly owned one a couple of years ago and I really disliked the drag system on that 2018 LT. Um, the adjustments that I used to make, you know, a micro adjustment of the drag knob would really crank up the drag pressures and uh, potentially, you know, cause me to lose fish. And that was something that I, I just could not uh, get used to, couldn't get comfortable with. 
And even just from a, I guess, an audible perspective, a lot of these exists and even stasis to a to a degree have this you know incredible uh, drag sound and that was just not present on the 2018s i know it sounds like something quite trivial and minor but you know for someone who does enjoy fishing with exists that was just another factor that i guess that i didn't like about the 2018 and so i moved that reel on quite quickly after purchasing it so the 2018 won't be used as part of the the test and our kind of side-by-side -side comparison of the 22 versus all the other generations. But having, you know, had a bit of a play with the drag system just as is um, on the Exist that already has the braid on it, um, I'm really excited about giving it a fish because I think it's gonna be very similar to the 2015, which I absolutely love. So really excited about it. Next time you guys see me, I'm gonna be out on the water with these four reels and we're gonna try and catch a fish and talk about how the new 2022 exist fishes in the real world. Okay, did not, uh, oops, what the heck did I hooked here? Have I hooked a good brim or a Jew? <laughs> it's up. <laughs> Come back here. <laughs> All right. So we are just doing our exist test and I've thrown out a muscle lure on the 2015 uh, just off this rock wall or this this concrete wall I suppose and uh, did not take long I think it was about three casts in and we hooked up so I mean, I've used the 2015s for quite a while now and I absolutely love these things. Always super smooth, super reliable. Let's see what we've got. If it's a nice brim or if it's foul hooked. Seeing a lot of fish on the sounder, so. It's a nice brim. Okay, that's number one for the morning. It's a nice fish. And there's all the fish on the sounder. Good start on the uh, 2508. This is the 2508 PE actually. Love this reel. All right, guys, there's number one for the morning. Good start. Saw a lot of fish schooled up there behind me near the gate and just threw on one of the concrete walls and this guy ate it pretty quick. So, see if we can get some more. Alrighty, hey everyone, we are back out on the water now and uh, I've knocked off one of the reels in my comparison already. Been here for about five minutes and caught a really nice fish on the 2015 Exist. Silky smooth as always, but what you guys are really here for is the 2022. So before we start fishing with the 22 and the, I guess the lure style that I've got here, um, just wanted to give a big shout out to X Braids Australia. So also some of the YGK brand out of Japan. So they sent me a spool of Olatos um, eight strand braid that I've got spooled up on this exist. So really keen to give it a go. Really liking the feel of the braid itself. It's not super soft, so it does have a little bit of that kind of, not, we won't say memory, but um, not one of the softest, supplest braids. And that's something that I do like as a characteristic of braids that I fish with. So this is a 0.8 of a PE braid. Um, this was a hundred meter spool. So there is some six pound um, mono backing on this 22. Now, in terms of the setups, I've got four rods out here with me, four different exists, all 2,500 sizes. We've got the original from about 2006, the 2012, the 2015, and the 2022. Uh, on the 2022, I'm running a little Smith Shirasu sinking bibbed minnow. So what the idea is that a lot of these fish are sitting under pontoons within this um, kind of man-made system, and they're chewing on mussels and shrimp and little bait fish. So the idea will be I need to make nice tight casts. 
along the pontoons, let that sink down, and then I'm gonna twitch it in and around. I can also just hear fish going off behind me. So without further ado, let's get stuck into it. Let's see how the 2022 performs and hopefully we can catch, catch some fish on it. There's fish just on that wall right there. He's just kissing a oh, little, little something, but that's not what I want. It's a little salmon, I think. Yeah. That's a brim on that wall. All right, I've made another lure change for the Aussies that are watching. Uh, I think you'll know what this is. This is a mussel imitation by Outback Brimmer Baits, Callum Dow. And for all the international viewers, this is a, yeah, I'll give you guys a good look in a second, but uh, it's something that's been working really well for us. It's what I caught that first fish on as well on the 2015 this morning, but I just wanted to, <laughs> try something different didn't want to just throw the mussel right away but yeah for all the internationals for any fish uh you know who do chew oysters mussels that kind of thing this is just a, a brilliant imitation uh, it's worked really well here in australia on a number of species so check them out if you can but the idea is that uh you know it looks like a falling mussel off the pontoon And they just grab it as like a reaction kind of bite. We finally did it. We got the first fish on the 22 exist. So let's grab it out. There it is. All right. So this is uh, for all the international viewers. This is a black brim, and uh, they sit under these pylons and chew mussels and oysters and all sorts of crustaceans. Also chase bait fish and shrimp from time to time. Well, that's the first fish on the 2022 die or exist. Um, this is the 2500 size, uh, just as a reminder again, uh, nice smooth drag. It's been a pleasure to use all morning. Really enjoying this Otolos um, X8 braid. So this is the eight strand 0.8 of a PE, 16 pound. Um, not a huge fan of the color personally. I'm more of a kind of traditional um, multi-strand, multi-color uh, braid kind of fan. But so far, it's been quite easy to see as you're casting, you know, seeing your line on the water and uh, seeing for any twitches or that pause in the line as that lure is sinking and a fish grabs it on the way down. It's been perfectly fine. Um, it's going to take a little bit of time for the line to kind of bed in as well as the reel. That reel is only get, going to get smoother and better with more use. So let's keep going, see if we can get another one or two fish. But so far, we've knocked out two of the reels, as in the catches. So we caught our first brim really early on, on that 2015. That's always been a pleasure to use, one of my favorites. And uh, unfortunately, couldn't land the fish on the straight through. I might keep, keep throwing that around, see if I can finally get a fish on the crab and the straight through on the 2012. And then lucky last, I might throw around that OG, but I mean, anyone who's familiar with Exists knows how good the originals are. So I don't really have to talk about that one too much. It's all about the 2022. All right, we're back. SD card era, just GoPro things. Hopefully we've got that last catch on camera and the first on the 2022 for me. Now I'm running the crab on straight through. See some fish going down for it. Yeah. 
Yep. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good one on the crab. straight through and light leaders. All right, um, <laughs> that one hurt. That one really hurt. Hope you guys would have seen that uh, that fish come out on the GoPro. Not sure what it, was, what it, what it would have looked like, but um, I either had a nick or it was just too big of a fish and it took a really big lunge on three and just popped it. Um, yeah, really quite disappointing. Also one of the reasons I hate fishing straight through fluorocarbon. Um, what I really enjoyed about the start of that fight was the fact that uh, that fish didn't go hard back under because it was so springy and so spongy on three. Um, so perhaps I might try it again on four or maybe even straight through five because I know a lot of the guys are starting to do that or have been uh, fishing heavier straight throughs but um, that RSC spool on that 2200, super smooth as always. Um, that drag was coming off just fine, so I don't think that uh, that breakage was down to the reel at all. I think it was just really thin line and uh, perhaps a nick in it. So uh, yeah, that one hurts, but uh, let's keep going. Okay, we are back. We're going the original. We're going the oldest model now. After that bust off went straight through, so I've put another crab imitation on. So. Again, light olive cranker crab. Um, it's a fantastic crab imitation. I think I've got about five pound liter on this now. Braid, I just feel, and a beefier rod as well. So I just feel much more confident with this setup if we do hook up in getting those fish out and into the boat, into the kayak rather. Um, drag. Probably, I don't know, a kilo of drag pressure, I'd say. Fairly, fairly tight for light line. Because as you guys have seen, there's some big fish around and lots of sharp things. Lots and lots of sharp things for them to get me on today. The bite's been really kind of funny. Um, This reel's coming up to what, 15, 16 years old now? Well maintained. Um, it's just a pleasure to use as well, I've got to say. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the originals. Oh, don't know what the current's doing out here. Might be flowing back the other way again. A bit of an eddy back here happening on the last couple. Yep. Oh. <laughs> Far out. Oh man. That's three crabs I've lost today. Ow. Oh. My most expensive day in a long time. iconic sound. Right. That's on the twi uh, on the original. So this is the same pontoon where I lost that really big fish. There's the crab. And the 
the original. Okay, the current's really ripping here, so I'm gonna have, probably do three or four more pontoons and then get going, and then we'll wrap it up on this review. Yep, yep, just out the front of that pontoon. Not a big fish, but just taking that crab again. I'm glad I retired. They're just sitting on the bottom near the structure. There it comes. I might just pull this one in. Like so. Hey everyone, all right, we're gonna wrap up this 2022 Exist review video. Here it is one more time on the Miller Rods Twitch Freak. Had a great morning this morning. It was actually really fun to compare the four generations of the Exist this morning. Uh, caught some fish, lost some battles, but had a really good time. In terms of, uh, I guess, my final closing thoughts for this video, um, you know, the, the startup inertia when you're winding that 2022 is fantastic. It's really light, it's really smooth, as you would expect for a reel at this price point and with the technology that's gone into it. So, um, yeah, really pleased with it overall. Is it significantly, like, miles ahead of all the other generations? No. The, the answer is no, it's not. Um, it was an absolute pleasure to use. Will I be upgrading some of my older reels with, with more 22s? Yes, I will. And the main reason for that is those reels are getting to 16, you know, 10 years old and parts are starting to get harder and harder to, to, to find, to get, um, you know, even the, the OEMs are probably struggling to continue maintaining um, enough parts to continue service, rebuild, etc. if you do have issues down the track. So that will be the main reason why I'm going to continue to slowly chip away and upgrade those originals and the 2012s in the coming months. Um, but, you know, is it a significant improvement over previous generations? I'd say no. I really enjoy still using my 2015 and I'll continue to do so. So they're not going anywhere, but over the originals, they, there's definitely a, a significant improvement, but you do expect that with 16 years of uh, technology and that price point. So that's it, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, as always, if you've got any questions, pop them down into the comment section down below and uh, I'll see you guys on the next video, cheers.